What's up guys and welcome to the city of Nagasaki, Japan. Now we are really excited to kick this day off. There's a lot of history in this city. There's a lot of beauty in this city. We are gonna hit some of the highlights. If you're ever in Nagasaki, you should go check out. It includes some dark ones. It also includes some beautiful ones. Either way, we're going to see as much as we can in this video, but first, per usual, a cup of coffee. That was so nice. <laughs> Well, now we know where we're going. <laughs> Some older man came running up to me and handed me a map. I guess of, oh, Nagasaki map in English. It is in English. Yeah, I, apparently we don't look like we know where we're going, which that argument can definitely be made. In case you've never been to Japan, there are three little convenience stores that you're gonna see just about everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. You're either gonna see a 7-Eleven, a Family Mart, or a Lawson, and they're on pretty much every street corner. And I, I know I'm repeating myself, but I can't emphasize how often you'll see them, which is kind of nice because if you ever need a snack or a drink or a cup of coffee, you're never too far away. We wanted to give a quick shout out to John and Terry who bought us these coffees through our Buy Me A Coffee page. We always need a pick-me-up in the morning and usually we try to find something local and although this might not be local, it's still going to do the trick. Now before we jump into this video, we want to say that we're not experts on a lot of the things that have happened here. Now if you're watching this video, then I'm willing to bet that you've probably heard something about Nagasaki. It's not a huge city by any means, but it has a very sad place in the history books, unfortunately. During the Second World War, Nagasaki was the second and final location where an atomic bomb was used on it, after Hiroshima. In mid-morning on August 9th, 1945, an American B-29 bomber flew over the city and dropped an atomic bomb, completely flattening the city. Within seconds, thousands were killed, many more suffered horrible injuries, and the city was turned to rubble. Near the center of the town is an area that marks the Hippocenter. This is where the bomb exploded over the city of Nagasaki. It's now a memorial park with a few statues as well as a small window to view what the ground looked like immediately following the explosion. Near the Hippocenter, or Hypocenter, however you say it, is also the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum. That goes a little bit more in depth as it happened, as well as afterwards. So we're gonna go into that next. We don't always do museums, but this is one we couldn't pass up. There's years marked on the walls, like you're going back in time, and then downstairs is the museum. So that's very interesting. I think very immersive. Obviously this is a very sensitive topic, but it's something that, that needs to always be remembered, especially in times like now. And one thing that I will say about this museum is that it's exceptionally well done. I don't do very well with sad places, but that museum was incredibly well done. Adjacent to the Atomic Bomb Museum is the Nagasaki National Peace Memorial Hall for the Atomic Bomb Victims. and this. Memorial Hall is dedicated to the lives lost during the explosion and subsequently afterwards. You know, the, the horrible thing about a nuclear bomb is that, you know, you have the initial impact and then all of the lives that get lost throughout the years, not just immediately following the explosion. So it's free to walk through and we highly suggest stopping by it. It's right next to the Atomic Bomb Museum 
and it offers you another opportunity to learn more about this. While we're over here, we also wanted to show you guys Peace Park. It's very similar to the National Memorial Hall in that it commemorates the victims and the lives lost here, and it serves as a reminder of what happened. And it's not too huge, so you can pop over here after the Atomic Bomb Museum and check out the huge statue that's at the end of this little run that we're walking down now. We could spend a lot more time in this video talking about this chapter of Nagasaki's history and there are a few more things around the city to see in regard to this event but we're gonna move on to some other things that we have planned today because honestly the city has so much more but this is something that we felt like we couldn't really gloss over you know If you're coming to Nagasaki and you're looking to get around, then you've got a few different options. Today, we are walking. It's a pretty walkable city. Normally, you can get anywhere within the city in about 30 to 40 minutes, or you can take the tram system. I believe an entire day pass for the tram system here is 500 yen, so very affordable, and it'll get you from A to B as many times as you want to. Also, buses. So yeah, you got those two. You feel better now that you got some shorts? I had to change. The humidity here is crazy and it wasn't super hot this morning because it had just gotten done raining and so it was kind of fairly cool and now that the sun is out, boy it's so hot. It's brutal. <laughs> I feel like our plans have just been kind of jumbled up ever since we got a late start this morning due to the weather. We were planning on having a really cool traditional lunch today, but unfortunately the place shut down lunch before we could get there. So we came down to the wharf here in Nagasaki, but unfortunately sushi prices are a little too expensive for us and we don't want to take too much space in our bellies anyways right now because we got a really good dinner planned. So we're just going to walk through this area and show you around right before we get to the Nagasaki Seaside Park. I gotta be honest, this seaside park is gorgeous. There's plenty of views, it's a beautiful, it's turned out to be a really pretty afternoon and the grass is just so incredibly green. We've got palm trees over my shoulder, the mountains in the background. It gives you a really beautiful view of the bay, it really does. As beautiful and green as this park is from down here, luckily this entire region of Japan is very green, very mountainous, so I think we can get a better view from a little higher up. Slow and steady wins the race. Oh my gosh, no. Where's the lift? <laughs> now. It looks like the lift only takes you about halfway up the hill, so we're not even all the way up there yet. But I do kind of like this walk. You kind of get to walk through these little windy roads and it's cute. It's really intimate. It, it feels more authentically Japan than I think what we've experienced prior in Tokyo, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think we're going to find an elevator. Absolutely not. All right, this is 
the last stretch. This is just rude. <laughs> well, we still got more steps. Oh my God. But we made it to the observation deck. My gosh. All right, this is pretty cool. Was this and worth it? This is pretty cool. The views up here are pretty spectacular, honestly. There are other observation decks that you can go observe that are a little bit lower to the ground, or I guess, yeah, lower to the ground, lower. You get what I'm saying. That are lower okay. in elevation. That are lower in elevation. Um, but this one is absolutely spectacular. It's like a 360 view. There's clouds in the mountains over here. Like it's epic. We didn't really think we would need a break today because we got a late star, we were just gonna power through, but after that, we need a shower. So we're gonna run home, clean up, and we'll see you at dinner. All right, time for the best ramen in town, or at least the best ramen I've ever had. But first we have to get there, and honestly, I'm super tapped out on walking, so we're gonna take the tram and show you what that's like. It's 140 yen each one way. It's not too expensive at all, so we're gonna go ahead and pay the 280 for both of us and hop on the tram that's gonna take us all the way over toward Chinatown. That's not us. It's really nice and modern though. More than that one. <laughs> I have a feeling that's the one we're gonna get. So I believe the way this works is you get on the back of the train and then you pay at the front of the train. Easy peasy. Uh, couldn't tell from the look on our faces, we had no idea what was going on. <laughs> we've gone to a few different places while we've been here in Nagasaki for specifically ramen, and this place definitely knocked it out of the park as far as like the cool different kinds of ramen that it has. There's a tomato based one with eggplant that was super duper yummy, that's what I got last time. I think I might go for the OG like pork ramen this time, but Trey got a super duper spicy one and it's super yummy. Yeah. I said super a million times, but it's super awesome. So like a lot of the ramen shops here in Japan, you're going to have to load your money in here. I'm doing the Szechuan style rice, the ramen. Please, please wait. The ticket is now ready. Get to sit down and leave our ramen. I'm so excited. It looks like we kind of beat a little bit of a rush to you. This place is supposedly super duper popular for lunch. I know that this place is called Ramen Haragi and they specialize in a few different ramen options. And uh, we know this is about to be fabulous because we've already been here once and online it said that it was the best ramen in town. We've been to a few different spots and there's some really good ramen here in Nagasaki but this is just remarkably good. And they do have a few tables for like two to four people, um, but everything else is kind of those individual stalls, which I kind of like. We've only been in Japan for about four days now, but we've had ramen every single day. We have absolutely fallen in love with it. Ever since we had it the first time back in January when we came to Tokyo, we were only here for 10 days at that time, but we knew we wanted to get back up to Japan to see more of it. So that's why we're here, not only just for the ramen, which is worth the trip alone, but also because we want to see more of Japan. So we're starting off here in Nagasaki and working our way north up to Tokyo, and we're gonna have a lot of videos coming out. So stay tuned, but either way, I'm sure a lot of it's gonna have ramen in it. I can't imagine we're gonna get too sick of it too fast. Or maybe we'll just never get sick of it. Ramen all the time. I think we said this in our first Japan or our second Japan video, one of the videos that we did earlier this year. But sleeping is very acceptable when drinking your ramen or eating your ramen when eating your ramen. So very acceptable, let the chef know it's good, so slurp away. Also don't slurp your soup into your eye. <laughs> no. 
Not my finest moment. Oh, and now it's dark. I go to sleep now. Bye bye. <laughs> One more stop. <laughs> One more stop. The perfect thing about Ramen Hiragi, outside of the ramen, is its location. It's situated right next to an area of town called Shiambashi, which is definitely the nightlife part of town. It's a Monday night, and it's only 8 p.m., so uh, this area is pretty dead, but it looks like a pretty good spot to grab a beer, so that's what we're here for. No idea. It's just a, a terrifying alley. So if this isn't a hole in the wall divey kind of bar, then I don't know what is. There's not much space in here at all, which is like perfect. I'm guessing this place is like nuts on the weekends. Obviously it's a Monday night, so there's not a whole lot of craziness going on, but the beers are still being poured even if it's a Monday night, which that's all that matters to me. We're just over here playing cards now and enjoying our beers. And uh, yeah, just enjoying I guess having a bar all to ourselves is kind of nuts. All right, y'all, it's been a jam-packed day, but tomorrow we head out to go to Osaka, and from there we're going to be doing a bunch of different day trips around the area. So get ready for a lot more of Japan, and we'll see you in the next one.